Okay, episode 52 of 100. I got my numbers a little bit muddled up as I was going along and I thought this was the either 50th or 51st episode. And I thought to myself, ah, fucking prime opportunity to do a bit of a recap, kind of halfway there to the 100. So first of all, I'm going to explain what the whole to 100 means. I, I suppose, am an aspiring YouTuber. I am a YouTuber, I have a YouTube channel, I have, you know, 305 subscribers, I think, the last time I counted, which was, you know, <laughs> every five minutes, so unless I've gotten a hit more since then, it's still 305. Um, so I'm an aspiring YouTuber. I can't make money off this as of yet. There are certain requirements that you have to hit, certain parameters that you have to hit for Google or YouTube in order to monetize your channel. The two, that there's a load of them. The two of them that I'll be going for is a thousand subscribers. You need two. So one of them will be a thousand subscribers. I'll hit that within the next year, easy enough, I would imagine. At, the, at my current trajectory, I, I should. It's not linear, it tends to be exponential. The more you get, the more you get, the more you get, the more you get. Um, so I'll hope to have at least a thousand subscribers, hopefully within about six months. That might be one to write down. You know, at this moment in time, I would like to think that in six months time, I'll have 1,000 subscribers. And the idea of writing it down somewhere that I can kind of check on it is to mark it because I know what I'm like. In, let's say hypothetically, in five months time, I have 2,000 subscribers. I'd be like, right, okay, I've made 2,000. How will I get to two and a half thousand? And I'd be thinking, I'd be thinking to myself, oh fuck, I've only got 2,000. But if I say, you know, Objectively speaking, in six months' time, if I have a thousand subscribers, that would be a good thing. If I have one thousand and one subscribers in six months' time, I'd be fucking delighted with myself. But if I don't have that kind of metric, if I don't have something to rein in my fucking ambition, what could happen is in six months' time, I'll have four thousand eight hundred subscribers and I'd be like right okay I have to get to five thousand because that's a nice round number and if once I get to five thousand I'll be happy and then of course your ambition is ex your ambition is uh, not linear what the fuck is the word exponential your ambition is exponential or at least mine certainly is so I might think oh yeah another hundred subscribers now would be great that'd be an extra 33 percent if i got another 100 subscribers but when i have 5,000 subscribers i know what i'm like it'll be you know get to 10 get to 20 get to 50 get to 100,000, get to a quarter of a million get to a million get to 10 million and you can see how your expectations rise exponentially so Setting goals, I think, is a great way, if you're that way inclined, which I certainly am, setting definable goals. If I'm at this point, at this date, that would be fucking savage progress. Now, there's a downside to that, because in six months' time, if I only have 400 subscribers, I might be kind of going to myself, oh, that's a bit shit. And if I don't have that metric, I might be delighted. I might be going, oh, fucking hell, I've got 400 subscribers. It's not great. So having a definable goal, works both ways it can kind of brighten your day and piss on your chips in the same breath but that's a good thing and one of my boyfriends Jordan Peterson he mentions this this concept quite a lot he'd be a big proponent of, of setting goals and he said that a, one of the reasons at least and this makes a lot of sense to me one of the reasons that people don't set goals because when you set a goal you're setting your terms and conditions for success. So for example, I might say in six months time, I aspire to having a thousand subscribers to this channel. And I think that's, you know, realistic. And I need to give myself a good firm kick up the hole if I don't hit that metric. So it can be a force for good so that it drives you to achieve something. But what Peterson says, the reason people don't do that is because as well as giving you the terms and conditions for your success, it gives you your terms and conditions for your failure. So in six months time, if I don't have the thousand subscribers, you've, you, you've been shown to have failed. If you do hit it, you've been shown to succeed. So what people do is they don't want to highlight identifiable metrics to define 
essentially how much of a loser they are. They like to keep things vague. And the, the phrase that he puts it on is um, they like to hide things in the fog. So it is a double-edged sword, but provided you're kind of realistic with it and you don't set the bar too high, I think it's a, a net positive to have goals. Plus, the longer that you set, the longer, um, the more time that you've spent setting goals and the more goals that you've set, the more realistic your goals should become. So if I say I'm gonna have a thousand subscribers in six months, that's, you know, 150 a week, is it? Whatever it is, maths off the top of my head, what would be my forte? But let's say I don't hit it. Maybe it's because I haven't put in the effort, but maybe it was too high a bar. So the more goals you set yourself over a longer period, the more, the, the better you become at setting goals and setting attainable goals. Now you don't want to blow too sm much smoke up your hole and think, oh, if I get another 50 subscribers in the next two years, wouldn't that be great? So you have to be careful, but again, like getting better at anything, the more you do it, doing it more is how you get better at anything. Whether it's fishing or skydiving or driving or writing poetry, playing the guitar, running, it's all about time on the mat, time on the mic, time on stage, time in front of the computer, time on the guitar. It's all about time. And the more time that you put into thinking about these things, the better that you'll get over time. So I must set myself a metric. And I think, to be honest, I think another 600 subscribers within the next six months is probably a bit of a shitty target. I think I should maybe increase that. But again, I'm going to have a put a, put a bit of thought into it and define it. But in relation to the whole halfway there, I should have explained this at the outset. So Mr. Beast's advice to aspiring YouTubers, which I'm one of, was upload 100 videos. Upload 100 videos and make each one slightly better than the last. And then once you've done that, go ask somebody who is a, a YouTuber and has success for their advice then. Because there's no point asking advice from somebody when you're still a bit shit and inexperienced. It's like you buy a guitar, you bring it home, you haven't practiced it, and you email the best guitarist in the world for some advice. All they're gonna do, if they've any sense, is tell you to fucking spend a thousand hours practicing and then ask me. And that's essentially what Mr. Beast's advice was. If you're only starting out, upload a hundred videos, try and make each one a little bit better than the last, and then go looking for help, because you can't, you can't ask for help at zero. There's no point in, in when you're learning how to drive, sitting down with a stunt driver and asking him for his advice. You need to be able to fucking drive the content thing before he's in a position to advise you on anything. So I'm halfway there. I set out to make 100 videos and make each one slightly better than the last. I haven't done that. I've been happy enough to just upload them and take whatever benefits come along the way because if I was making one, if I was attempting to make each one better than the last, that would be a reason for me not to upload one. I'd be like, oh no, that, that's not really an improvement on the last one. And I'm a motherfucker for procrastinating. And uh, I've a fucking black belt in mental gymnastics in relation to coming up with excuses of why I shouldn't do something. So I've decided to get out of my own way, upload them to fuck, get it done, and whatever I learn, across the period of uploading the 100 videos, that's, that's the payoff. And I've learned a fucking shit ton. I'm halfway there and I've learned a fucking shit ton. I've been reminded of something, it's funny because I learned what I'm about to outline here when I was podcasting. I'm obsessive when it comes to, who, how many views has it got? How many people have watched at the end? Where are the views coming from? Are they men? What age are they? What's the demographic? What time of day are they fucking listening to? I got caught up in that when I was podcasting and I found myself being caught up in it again, YouTubing. It's nearly worse now because YouTube gives you more metrics. It gives you more things to obsess over. And I have an obsessive, I don't think I'm too, I don't think I have an obsessive personality, but I have elements of my personality 
lend me towards being obsessive. And I think the way the views and the listens and the demographics and all the rest of it are kind of set up, they're set up by YouTube, in my humble opinion, to be addictive. It's like the slot machines. You pull down the bar and it goes, digga, 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 digga. The first one comes down, the second one comes down, the third one comes down. You could just press a button and it would say, you lost, press the button, you won, you lost, you lost, you lost, you won, you lost, you lost, you won. It could do that. When you pull that lever, there's no mechanics behind it. Nothing has to play out. That delay is intentional to make it more addictive. And I think YouTube are up to something similar in relation to how often it's updated. Because if, if your views were updated every 24 hours, I'd check them every 24 hours. But because they're uploaded, and again, they're, they're not even in sequence. It's not every, if, they, if they uploaded the change in views every five minutes, I'd change it every five minutes. Or sorry, I'd check it every five minutes. But they don't. It's every 10 seconds and then it's every three days and then it's every five minutes and then it's every two hours so you never know when a change is going to happen and that really keeps you engaged and the phone is out and you're checking all this fucking shit and to what end other than kind of giving yourself a little fucking dopamine buzz and to me it's it it sucked me in and i'm still sucked in i haven't gotten out of the habit of doing it but at the very least i'm aware of it and like any bad habit becoming aware of how utterly psychotic it is goes a long way into solving the issue so i learned that from podcasting essentially forgot about it relearned it again through youtubing and i'd say i'm a little bit quicker so i'm 50 episodes in now 51 or two out of the 100 that i'm going to do i'm going to do a hell of a lot more but out of the initial 100 i'm 52 episodes in and i'm really aware of it and i'm going to take action i might put a reminder on my phone every six hours i get a little fucking notification to say check your youtube or something to that effect and you might say oh well you fucking learned at podcasting apparently how come you don't still know it but it took me fucking 400 episodes podcast to cop it it only took me 50 videos on youtube to cop it and hopefully i don't think i've cured myself of it but maybe it'll be when i move on to the next thing maybe i'll only do 10 of them or five of them. Maybe when I start making documentaries, I won't obsessively look at the views all the time from the very start. Because you're, it's, it's progressions. Provided your trajectory is good, provided you're heading in the right direction, incremental improvements will prevail. You wanna to get to the top of the mountain, it's a fucking step at a time. You wanna to get to the end of a marathon, it's one step after the other. There's no big giant fucking leaps in life. There might be occasional ones, you know, scattered throughout your existence of the 40, 50 or 80 years that you spend on this planet. But for the most part, it's fucking incremental steps will prevail. So provided your trajectory is good, you're on a winner. But the thing about trajectories is tra trajectories can go up or fucking down. So how do people end up fucking homeless or with serious addiction problems? Fucking one step at a time, the exact same way that people succeed is the exact same way that people fail one step at a fucking time one day at a time you get to be a big giant fat fuck from one chocolate bar and then another chocolate bar and then another chocolate bar and you get fit from making those decisions not to eat that one chocolate bar and not to eat that one chocolate bar and not to eat that one chocolate bar you don't get ripped and jacked and in savage shape by not eating for a week or a day or whatever it is. And the same goes for getting fat. You don't end up with a big gut hanging out over your belly because you binged, ate and drank on a Saturday night. It's a fucking, it's a lifestyle thing. And your success in life, whether it be in sports, in appearance, in health, financially, relationship wise, spiritually, it's the exact same thing. It's fucking one step at a time. But anyway, I digress, as always. Getting back to the whole Mr. Beast challenge type thing. Learning absolute shit tons. It's been fucking great. And I suppose the one, if, if I have one take home, it's again, not something that I've learned because I fucking learned this years ago. 
but it's just something that's become more reinforced having done another lock of episodes again because including podcasting and YouTubing I'm upwards of fucking 500 episodes at this stage and what's become reinforced is what I harped on about when I started podcasting originally which is get out of your own fucking way and just do it take the uh, take the pressure off yourself and I suppose one thing that I've learned about myself is if you're going to really try at something you're going to have to put in the time and the effort and you're going to have to put yourself out there no matter what endeavour it is and you're going to fuck up along the way and that's going to be painful you know nobody's going to listen to your podcast nobody's going to watch your fucking YouTube videos you're going to be shit at Qatar for ages before you're going to be half decent and then you're going to be half decent for ages before you're fairly decent and you're going to be fairly decent for ages before you're good and it's fucking painful sludging through all that shit but what I like to do is I like to bury my past failures in more recent attempts so I'll put up a quote unquote bad video but within a week that'll be fucking 10 videos ago so you bury your failures in continued effort and I think there's there's something that I really need to reflect on there it's something that Joe Rogan has mentioned before I'm going to butcher his quote now but the sentiment will be there build your mountain of, of success one layer of paint at a time there's something that I really like about that and this this has been well documented you look at all the most successful people in the world the Michael Jordans and the Michael Jacksons of the world the Beethovens the Mozarts the fucking Da Vinci's all these fucking great any great any great full fucking stop any great person their achievements 99.9% of the time are born out of one thing out of a hundred thousand becoming successful Michael Jordan landed more fucking hoops than fucking anybody else I'm talking out of school here but you'll get the sentiment he fucking shot more fucking baskets in his lifetime than anybody else but he also missed more than anybody else and it's the same with strikers in soccer the top goal scorers are invariably the guys who miss the most there's an element of volume you know the the musicians the guys who get the number one albums and the number one singles and the guys who fucking make their fortunes from maybe an album or a song it's one album or one song out of fucking 50 they just keep going and going and going and going and going and the only thing that's going to make you do that is the only thing that's going to give you the fucking fortitude and the courage and the resilience to keep on going is to do something that you enjoy doing so very very happy that fact that I've gotten out of my own way I'm going to try and get out of my own way even more and hit record and start talking and get what's in my head out of my head and if you have enjoyed this or any of the other videos check out some more there's a load of content there online there's a load more coming my name is Fran McCone this is the off the lead YouTube channel if you like anything and you want to give me a dig out you want to help me like comment share it with a friend all that stuff goes a long way and on that note, I'll chat you soon.